Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. This week in our Gospel passage, we get to hear from the Sermon on the Mount. And there's these two interesting things that Jesus says. He says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. And he also says, you have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Does anybody know what he's referencing there? Who said those things? It's actually in the Old Testament. Those things were written. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. The hate your enemy part is a little bit more obscure. Uh, most scripture scholars think that it's basically a summary of the warfare laws in the book of Deuteronomy. But both of these times when Jesus is referencing these sayings, they actually come from the Old Testament. Right? So Jesus is saying, you have heard that it was said, but I say to you something different. Right? And so it might cause a question in your mind. How is it that Jesus is contradicting something in the Old Testament? How is he contradicting Scripture or laws from God that have been revealed in the Old Testament? And it's actually a very important question. It's also related to another similar question that many people have when they first start reading the Bible, is why is it that God allows certain things in the Old Testament that he doesn't allow in the New Testament? Right? Things like polygamy and other things like that. Why is God permitting some of those things in the Old Testament, but not in the New Testament? And the answer is really a couple of different reasons. One is the historical context of the Old Testament, but also another reason is a theological reason. All right, so first of all, we know from the historical context, we know that in the book of Leviticus, when Moses prescribes that the people out of vengeance can only exchange an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, that is actually a more merciful law than what previously existed. As you know in human nature, when people get wronged, oftentimes their response, their vengeful response, is actually disproportionate. So one of the laws that Moses made in the Old Testament was that if somebody takes something from you, you can only take revenge in the same measure that that person took from you. If somebody takes your tooth, you can take their tooth, but you can't kill them, right? some such thing. And so we know that from the historical context. Moses was trying to bring them along a little bit to only have just punishments in accord for crimes that people had committed. And another reason is a theological reason. We know that Israel, God's people, right? If you think about it as an analogy with a child, this is something that St. Irenaeus, one of the earliest church fathers, pointed out to people who question these things about the Old Testament. Right? When you're raising a child, you don't reveal all the rules of life to them at once. Right? You take it slowly on, an, on a need-to-know basis. And that's what St. Irenaeus and many other church fathers said that God was doing throughout the Old Testament. He was slowly bringing the people along, preparing them for the fullness of revelation that would come in Christ. Christ is truly able to say that these people have heard it said, but he offers something even further, even something more challenging. This is something that uh, is referenced in the book of Romans. St. Paul says that Christ is the end of the law, not as in all those laws from the Old Testament are worthless, but as in all, everything from the Old Testament is always pointing to the eventual end, who is Jesus. Jesus is the perfect 
fulfillment of all of those laws. And I think for us at a personal level, I think this is also significant to us. It reveals a great mystery of the Christian life that all throughout salvation history, God was slowly bringing his people along and gradually, surely enough, he was always going to be asking more out of them. And that's exactly what God does with each of us in our own personal lives. As soon as we give God a little bit of an opening in our life and in our soul, that he always is asking for more from us. Those of us who have been at this life for a long time, pursuing discipleship of Christ, we know this is the case. And it takes great courage to every day to be willing to open ourselves up even a little bit more, to try to be even more perfect, just as our Heavenly Father is perfect. 